songs that day, and the next day the staff said, what was that like? And I, I remember this, I said, she's got something special. Songs are supposed to make us feel, and she really translated that emotion of every moment of every song. Star. And I was right, just a few months later after moving to Nashville, she stopped by MSA again and played me Tim McGraw picture to play. As the years passed, my instincts about her proved true. She became the most important artist on the planet. No one has ever connected with and touched their audience more than her. She expressed what millions were feeling. She knew their fragility, their hopes, their dreams, and she translated those through those songs. Perhaps Keith Urban put it best. A good songwriter, he said this about her, a good songwriter can have you see the flowers in the song. A great songwriter can have you see and feel them, but a truly gifted songwriter will have you see, feel, and smell those roses in the window. Amen. <laughs> She navigated global stardom with elegance and integrity. She topped the charts in country music then and pop in a way no one has ever done before and probably ever since. She funded an education program for up and coming aspiring songwriter artists. She stood up for her fans. She stood for inclusivity and for artists and songwriter rights. And she did these things not only through her songs, but through example by the way she lived her life. Honor is NSA our Songwriter Artist of the Year seven times. Oh my God. 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 2015. Oh my God. <laughs> in my opinion, she's the greatest artist songwriter of the generation. Welcome to you.
in my mind, secretly established genre categories for lyrics I write. <laughs> Three of them, to be exact. They are affectionately titled Quill Lyrics. Oh my god. Fountain pen lyrics and glitter gel pen lyrics. I know this sounds confusing, but I'll try to explain. I came up with these categories based on what writing tool I imagine having in my hand when I scribbled it down, figuratively. I don't actually have a quill anymore. I broke it once when I was mad. I categorize certain songs of mine in the quill style if the words and phrasings are antiquated. If I was inspired to write it after reading Charlotte Bronte or after watching a movie where everyone is wearing poet shirts and corsets. <laughs> if my lyrics sound like a letter written by Emily Dickinson's great-grandmother while sewing a lace curtain, that's me writing in the quill genre. <laughs> I will now give you an example of one of my songs I would categorize as quill. How is one to know? Yep. Me and you, where the spirit makes the bones. In a faith forgotten land, in from the snow, your touch brought forth an incandescent glow, tarnished but so grand. Category number two, fountain pen style. I'd say uh, most of my lyrics fall into this category. Fountain pen style means a modern storyline or references with a poetic twist, taking a common phrase and flipping its meaning. Basically trying to paint a vivid picture of a situation down to the chipped paint on the door frame and the incense dust on the vinyl shelf placing yourself and whoever is listening right there in the room where it all happened. The love, the loss, everything. The songs I categorize in this style sound like confessions scribbled and sealed in an envelope but too brutally honest to ever send. For example, because there we are again in the middle of the night. <laughs> We're dancing around the kitchen in the refrigerator light, down the stairs, there. I and there we are again when nobody had to know. You had to know the secret prayer and you swear to remember it all too well. The third category is called glitter gel pen. Way. Frivolous, carefree, bouncy, syncopated perfectly to the beat. Glitter gel pen lyrics don't care if you don't take them seriously because they don't take themselves seriously. Me? Is she about to meet us? Glitter gel pen lyrics are the drunk girl at the party who tells you that you look like an angel in the back. It is what we need every once in a while in these fraught times in which we live. For example, my ex man brought his new girlfriend. He's like, oh my god. I'm just going to shake it to the fellow over there with the hell of your hair. Come on over, baby. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> Why did I make these categories, you ask? <laughs> Because I love doing this thing that we are fortunate enough to call a job. Writing songs is my life's work and my hobby and and, and my ever ending my never-ending thrill. I am moved beyond words that you, my peers, decided to honor me in this way for this work that I would still be doing if I'd never been recognized for it. I've been on a joy ride down memory lane because I have been re-recording my yeah! first And when I go through the 
process of meticulously recreating each element of my past and revisiting the songs I wrote when I was 13, 14, 15, that path leads me right to Music Row. How my mom would pick me up from school oh and drive me to my co-writing sessions with dozens of writers, and some of you are in this very room tonight, who 15 years ago decided to give me their time, their wisdom, their belief, before anyone thought that writing with me was a productive use of an afternoon. <laughs> I will never forget you, every last one of you. Part of my re-reporting process has included adding songs that never made the original albums, but songs I hated to leave behind. recorded a bunch of them for my version of my albums. Fearless, my version, came out last year. And as I was choosing songs for it, I came across one that I had written with the Warren Brothers when I was 14. Oh my god. I decided to record it as a duet with the brilliant Keith Urban. Yeah. And when I called up the Warrens to tell them I was cutting our song 17 years after we'd written it, I'll never forget the first thing they said. Well, I think that's the longest hold we've ever had. <laughs> In 2011, just over 10 years ago, my trusted collaborator and confidant, Liz Rose, <laughs> came over to my apartment and I showed her a song that I had been working on. I was going through a rough time, as is the natural state of being 21, <laughs> and had scribbled down verse after verse after verse, a song that was way too long to oh put on gosh. an album. Yeah. It clocked in at around yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. So we set about editing, trimming, cutting out big sections until it was a reasonable 5 minutes and 30 seconds. What? It was called All Too Well. Yeah. when I re-recorded my 2012 album Red, I included this 10-minute version with its original verses and extra bridges. I never could have imagined when we wrote it that that song would be resurfacing 10 years later or that I'd be about to play it for you. or time. A good song transports you to your truest feelings and translates those feelings for you. A good song stays with you, even when people or feelings don't. Oh my God. Writing songs is a calling, and getting to call it your career makes you very lucky. You have to be grateful every day for it, and for all the people who thought your words might be worth listening to. This town is the school that taught me that. And to be honored by you means more than any genre of my lyrics could ever say. Thank you. Woo!